Materia Tudor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I just want to um, acknowledge the uh, contribution made by my colleague um, about the concern for the lack of access to just justice and how, I mean, how this legislation hasn't dealt with any of that because it is, in fact, a policy of government to restrict access to justice. And um, particularly to, um, I was at the 2014 uh, Ethel Benjamin address of the Otago Women Lawyers um, Association Society in Dunedin when uh, Justice Wynne Kelman was giving an address there when she was highly critical of the policy that, that she described as a marketisation of justice and justice services, that increasingly uh, lawyers and judges were being described as, um, as stakeholders, um, and that there was an increasing uh, policy approach that would provide market, um, a, a market for justice services as opposed to the rights of citizens to have access to justice across the board. And it was a, I would uh, recommend members who have an interest in this area, in the justice area, to, uh, to look at her address from 2014, um, where she is a, applies a very critical and a very analytical um, assessment of the current government policy that is excluding thousands and thousands of New Zealanders from access to justice. Um, when they so desperately need it. So, um, to the bill, the Green Party supports this bill. Um, uh, I'm standing actually on behalf of my colleague uh, Dave Clendon, who saw this bill through the Select Committee on our behalf. Uh, so, uh, I, don't, I wasn't directly involved in um, the ushering of it through the process. Uh, but I will just make a few um, comments here. There were a number of good things um, about the legislation. Um, we were strongly in support of the Human Rights Commission's submission um, that r raised concerns about the outdated language of the legislation uh, and has, some of that language has been improved in the bill, that there is a general increase in the transparency around some of these legal services, which is a good thing. Um, the increase in the level of damages that, is to be, that can be awarded by the District Court and by um, the Human Rights Tribunal to uh, $350,000. We, um, we fully agree with the increase in that level of damages, um, particularly for the Human Rights Review Tribunal, who, need to, who are one of our core watchdogs for this. And we've seen actually a recent case um, exposed where uh, damages were awarded in favour of um, a, a person so it's really good to see that they have uh, greater powers um, to award greater amounts in terms of damages. So there were some concerns that we had with the final shape of the legislation uh, and concerns that the National Party had voted down a number of SOPs that, as I understand it, are not reflected in the divided legislation. Um, I will just acknowledge uh, Jacinda Ardern did talk about her SOP in relation to the Treaty of Waitangi. We supported that SOP. It's disappointing that National did not um, and excluded that broader concept of not just um, dealing with the legal matters relating to the treaty, but resolving them in the context of both our history and our current need. Uh, and that is really important because we are, the, the Treaty of Waitangi, Te Tiriti of Waitangi, is a document that evolves over time and meets our needs as our needs change over time. And so it cannot be constrained to just one point in time and one interpretation. That is not how that document works. Um, and neither should it, because the issues of colonisation that arose uh, after the treaty was signed and, and contrary to the treaty, um, um, to, contrary to the treaty wording, means that there will be ongoing issues with colonisation that need to be reflected back in terms of treaty um, justice. So the, um, we were very disappointed that our SOP to establish a register for pecuniary interests of judges um, was uh, also denied by a national. Um, my colleague Kennedy Graham made um, an attempt to put this in place uh, last year too, as I understand it. Um, this is just about making sure that there's transparency for uh, the f financial affairs of people in those core constitutional positions. We now have a system available for the public to show transparency of MPs, um, um, pecuniary interests, and we think that that should be the same for judges as well. So uh, we were disappointed that the SOP from Lewis of Wall to a shrine and stat statute, the long established practice of judges of the Māori Land Court being appointed on the advice and recommendation of the Minister of Māori Affairs was not supported, but now we know why. Because, <laughs> because actually at the same time that this was being dealt with, 
um, this issue was being dealt with through this debate on the Judicature Bill, National was planning to um, decimate the Māori Land Court uh, and uh, fire a very large number of these stuff without telling the Minister of Māori Affairs about it. So, of course, National then said, well, we don't want to have a clause in this bill that requires the Minister of Māori Affairs to know anything about the, import uh, about the appointment um, of judges or actually anything else to do with the Māori Land Court, it appears, because uh, National uh, have decided that they know much more about it and um, will simply go around uh, firing very large numbers of staff from this court, which it has been a... An <laughs> it's crazy. Do they, and so the Māori Party voted yeah, against the SOP. Well, there you go. Um, so it does seem... Uh, the Māori Land Court does have a uh, chequered history for Māori um, over, um, over its lifetime uh, and in the early years was uh, a real tool of the state to take land from Māori. But as time has changed and circumstances change, there has been a greater reclamation of both the treaty concepts but also the rights of iwi Māori to have some control over that process. And the Māori Land Court has um, oftentimes been a really important line of defence and protection for uh, Fano and Hapu who are trying to protect their land. Um, the fact that this not only was Louisa Wall's SOP uh, denied by National, but that National is now trying to um, basically uh, destroy the court um, through significant job loss, just goes to show that uh, these few remaining defences of Māori land are being taken by National. I mean, they opposed our, the Green Party Public Works Act um, uh, legislation that would have stopped Māori land from being taken under the Public Works Act as well. They've now uh, decimating the Māori Land Court. They're not supporting uh, greater involvement of the Minister of Māori Affairs in the appointment of judges to the Māori Land Court. It all smells like, looks like, and is walking like uh, the uh, National Party is wanting to uh, crack open the few defences that remain to enable Māori to protect their land in uh, customer and communal ownership. Um, so all of those things together spill very bad news for Māori. Uh, and I'm very surprised that the Māori Party has supported those provisions. Hey, uh, Sue. So, um, I also would say that uh, we were very disappointed that another of Louisa Wall's SOPs to take into account, account the desirability of the judiciary to reflect um, the broad cultural gender and um, gender um, picture, if you like, of Aotearoa was also denied. Um, if we are to remove the systemic racism that uh, still pervades the courts and the legal system, uh, despite many attempts, thank you, Mr. Chair, Mr. Speaker, despite many attempts actually to try to fix that, but there is still, nonetheless, um, still systemic racism. There's still a significant uh, unconscious bias in the legal system. Then uh, one of the core means to deal with that is to have representatives from across um, the gender. Uh, an ethnic uh, spectrum represented in the judiciary. Uh, it helps to raise awareness, it is a, a natural check on some of those unconscious biases and provides often support for uh, systemic change inside these organisations to support judges uh, and the legal system to move on and do better. Uh, so uh, not having any kind of commitment to um, diversity undermines the need for uh, the judiciary, for the legal system, to be less biased um, in the ways that we know it is. And so that was a real shame. But overall, sir, uh, we accept that um, there's more good than bad in this legislation. Uh, we've supported it so far and we'll support it at the third reading as well. Thank you, Mr Speaker.